Greetings. Welcome to my final presentation showcasing my action research project for educational media design and technology at Full Sail University. The journey began at Lee Elementary School in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a school that took seriously its responsibility to perform on the High Stakes Oklahoma Core Curriculum Test, or OCCT. But are we producing nothing more than a generation of test takers who are not equipped with the problem-solving, collaborative, and critical thinking skills they need in the 21st century? If so, what can we do about it? I was looking for support in the literature for my idea of use of video games in the classroom, and I found it. The constructivist design of educational games was said to provide better learning conditions than, than did most schools. Students became so engaged in a virtual world that they didn't even realize they are learning. This structure of a game based on an underlying curriculum fulfills the requirements for stealth learning. This action research project addressed improvement in math test scores among fifth grade students who scored in either limited knowledge or unsatisfactory range in the OCCT in the spring of 2010. If students could learn by playing a game, perhaps that learning would translate into higher test scores. Lure of the Labyrinth was a joint effort of Maryland Public Television, Learning Games to Go, the Education Arcade at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Fable Vision, and Orc Macro. The game was published on the Maryland Public Television website, thinkport.org, to address middle school math standards in Maryland. I applied the appropriate fifth grade Oklahoma math standards to each puzzle. identified as highest priority for needing improvement was measurement. I focus on one objective within the standard, specifically calculating the area of a rectangle for several of the course projects we were assigned throughout the year. For example, during month nine, Game Strategies and Motivation, we were tasked with teaching a lesson with a Facebook game. Upgrading Cafe World was a perfect lesson in Aerie. The purpose of Cycle 1 was to give students an opportunity for exploration by playing the first level puzzles in order to learn gameplay. In Cycle 1, students were expected to achieve a level of comfort playing games that are based on standards above their grade level, although they were not aware of that. The purpose of Cycle 2 was to determine and measure a correlation between time spent solving puzzles in the game and test scores in math. In Cycle 2, students were given full access to the game, including the narrative storyline, as well as the puzzles, hopefully increasing motivation to play. A higher level of engagement in the game was expected. By the end of Cycle 2, students were expected to have logged sufficient time in the game to beat each of the puzzle rooms. This involved solving each puzzle three times, after which the storyline caused the puzzle room to be locked, indicating mastery of the topic. The only puzzle that showed a 100% success rate was the warehouse, which surprised me a little because I thought it was the most difficult one to learn how to play, and I had to teach a cheat sheet. The most attempted puzzle, and the one with the highest success rate, was the employee cafeteria, possibly because it was the first menu item on the page and the only puzzle that had instructional videos presented. West Garden hit the list right at the median as far as number of puzzle attempts and enjoyed only a 10% success rate. Two 
types of tests were examined. Online topic tests supplied by the textbook company and benchmark tests supplied by the school district. The same percentile cutoffs were used to evaluate ranking as is used in the OCCT. Two students in the target group advanced in ranking, one from unsatisfactory to limited knowledge, and one from limited knowledge to proficient. Relatively few students, both in the target group and in the entire fifth grade, showed mastery in the topic of area. Evidence does not support any effect obtained by lure of the labyrinth, but there is evidence that the cause of failure was insufficient mastery in multiplication. In month 10 of our full sail journey, we discovered learning management systems, specifically Schoology, including games within the framework of an LMS, along with other content to provide a one-stop shop is one of my goals. The content elements of the LMS will include online access to the textbook, flash video lessons, and links to Web 2.0 tools such as Kerpoof and Scratch. I would also like to produce content using other game production tools such as GameStar Mechanic, Adventure Editor. All future production efforts will employ the ADDIE model to analyze the need, design, develop, and implement the content, all while evaluating the overall effectiveness for the target audience. So this leg of the journey comes to an end. The past year all rolled up into a neat little package. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed living it. I want to thank my classmates and course directors for being part of this life-changing experience called EMDT. I must now put together my own dashboard. Thanks for listening.